We're out here at the Solid Ground Sandpoint campus and we have about 175 households on the campus. We have approximately 250 children who uh, live with their families on the campus. Our program provides services and, and permanent housing to families who were once unhoused. Because we have so many families from a variety of backgrounds and uh, cultures, um, one of the challenges on the campus is to uh, create programming that's diverse enough to help build community. And one of the ways to build community is have different workshops and activities for the kids to participate in. What did you guys like about last week? We had a, a three-part series to um, our Solid Ground workshop for the kids. Meatballs are like one of the most universal um, dishes that you can find all over the world. It's kind of similar to fried chicken. Um, and, you know, it's one of those dishes that probably 90% of people in the world enjoy in some manner or have had. So we made meatballs on the first day and we had a conversation about um, the meatballs around the world um, and it was an opportunity to um, change some of these kids' minds about meatballs because there was a few of them that said they didn't like meatballs. My favorite were the meatballs because he just told us to add like a lot of ingredients and then I didn't think it was going to be good because I don't really like onion that much but then when I tried it it was just like mmm I just like really enjoyed it. I think he taught me one lesson that if we didn't like something, we had to at least eat it twice and see if you liked it, and that actually worked. <laughs> I tried the meatballs twice. At first, I was just like, eh. But now, I think I'm in love with meatballs. <laughs> I think food is the easiest form to learn something about someone else. Um, food represents who we are, um, our history, um, what we enjoy, what we don't enjoy, and who we are as a society. Like, we're, we're all different, but we're all the same in some sense. And we, we're all the same, but we're all different. But it's all delicious. <laughs> we put together um, a nice meal of a vegetable salad, and surprisingly, the kids really gobbled up <laughs> the vegetables, and I thought they were gonna turn their head to broccoli and sweet potatoes um, and, and golden raisins, but they actually like dove deep into eating those salads. And then we had brownies, and so they saw how easy it was to make brownies. Those are probably some of the healthiest brownies that they can actually have um, with the, the ancient grains that we use. This last workshop is kind of bringing it all together. We're gonna bring in the families, we're gonna have a conversation about food and just talk about what we've done over the last two weeks and just kind of have a family meal. I'm going to get one meatball. It's important that the children see a reflection of themselves working in the community, working in professions that they are interested in, because it gives them the ability to believe that they too can become doctors, scientists, mathematicians, storytellers, comic book makers, and chefs. If today is the last day, would you like, would you be inspired by that and start cooking at home? Yes, I would. Why? Because I like cooking and it's fun to do. He made cooking fun with everybody. Like, we could all come over to each other's house and start cooking together. Like, yeah. The other uh, challenge that some of the families face is food insecurity. And so, us providing food and an opportunity for the families to get together, um, to socialize, to share their own uh, cultural interests with one another, it, it helps us to also build community and it encourages the kids to be who they are, um, to kind of cherish their family gatherings and their traditions. Here's our um, bag of giving that we're giving away to all the families. Got some goodies in here, pretty much some pantry items. So just experiment with food in the, in the household with the kids. Get in the kitchen with your kids, celebrate food, enjoy food, have a good time. I looked in the bag, I went, oh my God, this is a lot of stuff. And I just made a big burrito with the um, pineapple, beans, and the golden raisins, and I think I used rice. 
And then I give it to my older sister, my older brother, and my dad. When my dad was cooking for us, I showed him how to, the right way to cook, like how the chef told us how to hold like the knife, and if you're cutting an onion, how to like cut it the right way. I showed him how to do that. You know, I think about um, all the times that I've been able to share dinner with someone, someone new, someone old, um, someone I'm trying to get to know. Um, it's usually around food, and we're having conversations about, like, you know, how this tastes or where they're from, um, and it becomes beyond the food. Then it's it's just an opportunity to get to know someone. If we can teach people how to get to know someone um, and open up and, and and use food or other aspects as an icebreaker, we, we're going to have less problems in the world because we're we're learning to appreciate people for their differences and what make them unique and special. It's a welcoming effect, it's you know, open doors and, and smiling and respect and uh, how do we learn a little bit about the history of everyone, if it's food or just general history, like that's just going to open up that door for appreciation and understanding people a little bit different um, and, and hopefully with a, a, lot, a lot of respect.